Luke and Nate here at the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. Today we're catching and cooking squirrels. And eating them. Yeah. Well, welcome to another episode of the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. Today, we are dealing with the squirrel epidemic. Now, if you follow my channels, you'll know that we have had this battle before. We had squirrels that nibbled on my gas tank on my boat. They chewed several holes in my garage. We had to replace our garage door. And uh, we did a catch alive uh, trap video that helped deter them from visiting our home for about a year or so, but they are back in force and causing trouble. And this time they've hit us right where it hurts, our pocketbooks. The squirrels have been crawling under the hoods of our cars and chewing stuff. We had one chew up the fuel line on one of my cars and the other one got into the computer like wiring harness and they chewed that up and destroyed it to the tune of $3,000. So we, we have spent a lot of money on car repairs. So squirrels are scum at our homes. Now you may be saying, Luke, don't hurt the squirrels. You can just trap them and relocate them. That's very, very illegal. And as I tell my clients, cause I'm a criminal defense attorney, if you're gonna do illegal things, don't post videos about it on YouTube. So instead we are going to be hunting some squirrels and we live in an area where we can hunt squirrels on our own property and uh, we're gonna do that. And we're going to also cook them up and see if we can't make some yummy squirrel dishes. But first, we need to start trapping some squirrels. Hey Nathan, you ready to eat a squirrel? Yeah. You got a nice bendy one? All right, let's do this. Watch out, bud. That's going to be a feel. <laughs> All right guys, we're gonna make the trigger here. Take this branch, bust that off there. Bust that off there. Okay, there you go, something like that. Sharpen that side. Here's a trigger. Get a flat little bit of stick like that. Put it in like that, okay? If anything disrupts it, pops off. All right guys, that's right there is the squirrel's nest and uh, where the culprits live and we're gonna go ahead and set up our trap right at the base of the tree. I got some 60 pound monofilament here I'm going to use for my string. And, uh, I'm going to bend this sucker over. Pop that out, see ya? Yeah. Alright, I got a little piece of bread and I've mushed it onto this stick. Okay. Put a little peanut butter on it. We're gonna shove it in the bottom of this hole. The stick is just to make it so the squirrel has to work to get it out. He'll get it out of there easy if he wants, but I want him to move around and bump into the trigger. There you go, got our little noose right there. Doesn't have to stay shut on its own because the spring of the trap will apply pressure to it. So we just need to get it in there. The critical part here is positioning this loop. He's got to stick his head, body in that loop. Ooh. Now, buddy, I told you to stand back. This will poke you in the eye, bud. I really don't want this flying up and taking your eyeball out. The squirrel has to come from this direction or this trap isn't gonna work. If he bumps this part or he comes from this side, he'll set the trap out without getting caught. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a lot of junk right over here to make this the obvious access point. Oh, that took forever. We got the trap all set up. It took a lot of finessing. It's just a real fidgety sort of thing. You're constantly adjusting the trigger and tweaking this and that. It took like 30, 40 minutes, but I don't have a lot of practice at it, so. But uh, little Nathan, I think, misunderstood the assignment because he brought this over for me for when I trap a squirrel. So, yeah, it's gonna be a little different. Well guys, that squirrel snare has been sitting in my front yard for about three days and they have not touched the bait at all. Nobody's even gone near it. They're absolutely ignoring my snare. So we got to get rid of some squirrels though. So we're up in the ante and I'm busting out this Benjamin Trail MP2. It's a .22 caliber 
uh, pellet gun, hunting pellet gun. And it shoots uh, a lead pellet about 900 feet per second. It shoots alloy ones about 1100 feet per second. And uh, it will get the job done. And it's nice too, because uh, you know I'm, I'm in an area where I really don't want to be shooting a 22 caliber gun around. And uh, the law, there's a lot of laws about shooting firearms in this area. But I can hunt squirrels legally with the pellet gun in uh, my neighborhood. So we're going to go ahead and do just that. But first, we're going to, to sight in the gun, make sure we got it dialed in, because one thing we don't want to do is wing a squirrel. We're going to shoot him, we want to kill him. Okay, we got these Crossman domed Ultra Magnum .22 lead pellets here. And uh, we're going to go see if we can hit our target. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> okay. You ready, bud? These guns are loads of fun, but they're not particularly accurate beyond 25 yards. So I've got my target set out at 25. And it's hard to get uh, a grouping smaller than that at 25. It's They're kind of all over the place and there's a lot of flyers. So now it's time to go squirrel hunting. Oh, you see that, Tom? You got him. I got him. Absolutely. Yeah, careful, don't want him to bite you. Oh, he is fat. Look at that. That is a big one. Here, Tom. Put him right in there. All right. Well, that is a chunky squirrel. I grew up in Alaska, and the squirrels up there are so skinny and scrawny. They're about a third or a fourth this size. This thing is substantial. It's like a small rabbit. I'm not sure I'm letting you in. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I hunted. <laughs> she liked the door. <laughs> she liked the bolt lock on me. <laughs> One squirrel down, two to go. But Tommy got a little bit cold, so we're gonna let him go inside and warm up. And I'm gonna just sit here on the sunny side of a tree trunk and see what happens. Well, Jacob decided to come out and join us on our squirrel hunt. Go over and get the sack, buddy. Here, yeah, open it, open up the open up the back. There we go. You wanna go show mama? I got one. You wanna see it? Yeah, no, okay. I can hear what they're here, I'm gonna hand you Jacob. Jacoby, it was so fun hunting with you, but it's your nap time, buddy. And so I'll come back up in a little bit after I get done gutting the squirrel. Hey, Tommy, look at this. Look what I just found. Look at that. It's a tree frog. He just, he just, I think he just fell out of the sky. Look at him. Oh, he's got to be freezing. He, what are you doing out? It's winter time, silly. Well, we got two squirrels and it's getting a little cold and dark, so let's go and clean our squirrels and get ready for some squirrel dinner. So we've got two very fat gray squirrels and uh, we need to skin these things and clean them and get cooking on them. So first off, let's get the skin off. All right, guys, we're gonna try to skin and gut these squirrels. And to start, we're gonna get right in here and go like that. All the way through that tail, a little bit on either side, just like that, okay? Just put that sucker down there, step on the flappy bit, and pull. There we go. Once it gets started, it's a lot easier. Okay, once you get the skin over his head, just kind of stick your fingers in his elbow like that, and then pull fingers out. And then uh, get the skin off. Skin here, 
Just make a little incision so you get a flappy bit of skin to grab a hold of. Doesn't need to be much. Go and work the feet off. There we go. There we go, one fat, healthy male squirrel skin. Take the head off. And get up in here. Try not to cut up the guts. Cut all the reproductive organs off. What you do is just gonna go ahead and grab the esophagus, pull all the way down, get it in the garbage bag. Let's go ahead and quarter this thing up. There we go. There we go. All right, well we got the leftover hides and I wanna do something with these as well, but I'm gonna go take care of dinner first. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap these suckers up and keep them cold until I'm ready to deal with them. You wanna eat that? <laughs> All right guys, I got the squirrel meat all cleaned and ready to cook and a lot of people like to, to fry up squirrel or make squirrel stew, but we're gonna do something a little bit weird. We are gonna make squirrely kabili palau. Now, kabili palau is the national dish of Afghanistan. It's a sweet and savory rice dish with carrots and raisins and goat meat. And it is one of my absolute favorite things in the world. It is delicious, absolutely delicious. And I want to make squirrel kabili palau, uh, not just because I'm a weird dude, but because it's designed to go with goat meat. And goat meat's a little bit tougher than a lot of other meats and it makes it super tender Mama. and just tastes so good. And so Mama. wild meats like squirrel Mama. meat might work Mama. really well in squirrely kabili palau as well. Mama. So we're gonna give it a try and see what happens. And I have never done this before. Or I've, ne I've never made squirrel based kabili palau before. So this will be an adventure. Um, it'll be Appalachian Afghani fusion. But anyway, I'm gonna show you how to make this awesome dish and how to cook up the squirrel and uh, we're gonna have some fun. Isn't that right, Jacob? I've seen it All Kabili Palau is, is you've got rice, carrots, onions, raisins, some seasonings, and meat. So basically the way you do it is you cook the raisins and the carrots in some oil, then you take it out of the pot, you cook the onions and the meat together, you season them, you add the broth, then you pull them out of the pot, then you add the rice to the broth, and then you cook the rice in the broth, mix it all back up together and simmer it and that's Kabili Palau. So let me show you how it's done. squished together but if you use long grain rice instead of medium grain rice it'll, it'll be more like it should but other than that it turned out pretty good you know the real fun thing about doing these recipes where you mix up different cultures is it allows people from all over the world to say that I suck at cooking some Afghani grandma is gonna get on the internet and just be like you suck <laughs> all right well let's try the squirrel bits out okay let's see how the squirrel came. Well, it's really soft 
Mm. It's actually pretty good. Really soft. A lot of wild game meats. It can uh, get tough on you because you don't have a lot of fat content. That's, that's tender. It kind of reminds me of dark meat chicken with a, a little bit of sweetness to it. Mm. Lots of little bones and tendons on it, you know. <laughs> it's hard to find a good solid piece of meat on them. But it's actually not bad. It really does taste like dark meat, dark meat chicken. Here, baby, you gotta try some. I didn't know you could make that smaller. <laughs> oh, I can make it smaller. I'm not done yet. <laughs> okay, don't worry about that. <laughs> that was a squirrel hair. <laughs> <laughs> He, you There's a it. squirrel hair right there too. <laughs> well, you know, that's, I gave you a clean bite and then you messed with it. Well, just... Look at, look at, there's all that, a little tiny bite with all that other stuff on there. Right. Hey. I love you very much. <laughs> it's good, I swear, I swear. I'm sure it is. I have a thing, I don't tend to like wild meat. I'm gonna edit this down, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to, this is taking the whole length of the video. <laughs> I've eaten raw horse. I can do this. <laughs> Focus on the raisin. Hey, squirrel! <laughs> Tasted fine. There was only trace of ounces of squirrel. It would take a lab technician three months to determine that. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> well, it's been a long day, and I'm going to turn off the camera here and eat my food. And then I'm going to go and prepare the hides. Well, I've got my two little squirrel pelts in here, and I want to do something kind of fun with them. So uh, I'm gonna flesh them out, get them preserved up, and uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. All righty, let's see here. Are you done with that one? Getting close, getting close. Yeah, it is kind of squishy. Now watch this, what we're gonna do? It's gonna take- sugar? No, it's salt, this is salt. The salt soaks up the moisture. And the and, gooey stuff. And the gooey stuff. And the gooey stuff's what makes it smell. So if we get rid of the gooey stuff, then it won't smell. All right, we'll just let that salt sit for a couple days, dissolve all that little membrane and dry out the hide. Then we'll go from there. All right, we've had the salt on the squirrel skin for about a week now. And uh, so let's go ahead and take it off the board. See how it's doing. I only want to see how it's doing, Daddy. That's what it looks like. There's a few spots here and there where I'm thinking mm, maybe a little bit more salt would do. But uh, this will be good enough for this part. I'm just gonna use this part for today. All right. All right, there we go. Got a little keychain squirrel tail. Went ahead and put a little clip on it. Oh, that isn't that nice. Yeah. Oh, there we got this one too. Which one do you want, Tommy? Those See, it's got a little coat hanger, so you can go. Oh, and you can actually bend it like that. Oh. Or you can bend yeah. it like that. Oh. Clip it on there. There you go. There's there's your keychain collection. You have a lot of key shades. Look at that. All right, you ready to go to school, buddy? Yeah. All right, go for it. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button so you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.